Hello, welcome back to the next video in our series here, our introduction to the IDF to pH toolkit. We're going to continue our uh, uh, look here at the domestic hot water components and continue our, our system build out here. And start adding some more information, some more detail to the system here. So if you're following along, um, in the last video we, we added a simple domestic hot water system to the, um, to the model. We made sure that our, all our connections were working properly, and, and then we added a, a very simple element, just a, just a simple domestic hot water tank. So we, we just added a tank to the energy model, and we set, a, we set just one parameter. Uh, we mostly left the tank at default values, but we did say that it was going to be a dedicated domestic hot water tank. Uh, and so, as we saw in the last video, that, that shows up in our, our PHPP uh, uh, energy model now. So what I'd like to do in this video is take a look at the next um, the next element in the in the domestic hot water system, which is gonna which is gonna be the the piping, um, the uh, both the recirculation piping and the branch level piping, and we'll see how how long the video goes. Uh, we might break it into two, or I might just um, uh, do them both here in in one, and we'll uh, we'll, we'll we'll see how far we get. But um, let's let's start by talking about the recirculation piping, uh, and let's build that out, and then we'll take a look at a couple different ways we can we can do that, and then um, and then we'll turn our attention to the the branch level piping after that. Okay, so let's first, let's start by taking a look at the PHPP before we go any further. And let's look at what type of information the PHPP is asking us to input. So in the domestic hot water and distribution worksheet, you can see that we have a domestic hot water circulation pipes section. And notice a couple things about that. Let me maximize the PHPP and we'll zoom in a little bit so we can really see this a little better. Let me sort of come up and over here. Okay, so here's our domestic hot water circulation pipe section. And notice a couple things. First of all, so we have a whole list of things that we're asked to input, the length of the pipes, the width of the pipes, the insulation thickness, etc. cetera. Uh, so fine, so we have to input a bunch of information. Uh, but then notice also that we've got five distinct columns over here of entry. Uh, and what the PHPP is allowing us to do here, or what it's giving us the option to do, is build out five different um, sets or banks of piping. So, so we can build up to five different banks or, or sort of sets or groups of piping. Now in most projects that we work on, we don't use more than the first group. So there's, there's no requirement that you use all of these, um, but you have up to five different banks of piping um, that, you, that you have the ability to enter here. And we'll, we'll see how we work with that in the, in the, um, the Grasshopper tool as well. So, so we are able to fill that out or, or flesh that out. Um, again, in most projects, you're not going to use more than just the, just the first column here. Um, but uh, again, we, we do have the option here. Uh, the other thing to notice is notice that we have um, uh, the ability to enter pipe information which is inside the thermal envelope, and then we have a whole separate section over here which allows us to enter pipe information for domestic hot water recirculation loops which are outside the thermal envelope. Um, you should never run domestic hot water circulation pipes outside the thermal envelope. I would hope that that should be self-evident, um, and I, I haven't even bothered to build out any tools to allow you to do any entry here. because. That would be a crazy thing to do, to enter your circulation pipes outside the envelope. So don't do that. Put them all inside the envelope. Um, you don't have any tools in the Grasshopper tools to even input anything outside the envelope. So I don't know. If you really want to do that, you're going to have to figure out some other way to do it, other than the IDF to pH tools. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, so let's see how we build out these uh, elements at any rate. Uh, and we'll see how we enter a circulation system. So let's go back to our grasshopper scene here. And let me maximize our grasshopper scene. Uh, oops, let me try anyway. Oh, it's so hard to grab this. There we go. So here's our grasshopper scene. And you'll notice here that we have an input for circulation piping. So we have the ability to input a circulation piping element. So if we go up to our building type rollout and we go to O1 model and we come down here to the domestic hot water section, you'll notice that there's all sorts of different uh, elements and one of them is a domestic hot water piping recirc system. So this is, uh, we'll go through all the inputs here um, uh, and this is going to allow us to build out a recirculation system. So I'll grab this and drop this onto the canvas. Now by default, let's take a look at what we get by default here. By default out of this component, we get nothing. 
So this is one of those components which will not yield, uh, or does not, we clean up here, uh, which does not have any default values. So we're going to have to give some information here before this is going to do anything. And if you take a look at the sort of tooltip here, you'll see that it says um, that this, this um, entry can take up to five distinct recirculation loops. Uh, and it requires you to input um, your information um, organized into data trees. And so I'll, I'll sort of take a look at that here uh, and, and show how, you're, how we need to organize this information for it to flow properly into this um, circulation uh, piping element. But notice here that we do have some entry for some entries for the actual geometry of the pipes, the diameter of all the pipes, so, so the sort of parameter information, insulation thickness and conductivity, um, insulation quality, the period that the that the system runs, you know, does it only run six hours a day or 12 hours a day, that kind of thing. So we have all the inputs that we need here, um, but we are going to need to kind of set these up in a sort of um, uh, a particular way. Now the way that we work with this component, let me open up my Rhino scene here so that we can see this a little more carefully. The way that we are going to work with this component is we're going to actually enter the geometry itself. So we're going to, we're going to be asked to actually draw some piping and then enter the geometry. You can see here that the pipe geometry accepts curves, that is a, you know, a line in, in Rhino, um, and we're going to um, enter up to five sets of recirc piping. Um, and as it says here, each, each of those sets should include a forward, both the forward and the return piping um, for, for that distribution. Um, ideally, as a single continuous curve, um, doesn't have to be though. Um, and we're going to use the entwine component to organize all this geometry into branches before inputting if we need to build out more than one bank or more than one set of uh, geometry here. So let's take a look at what that might look like. Let me go to our, our Rhino geometry here. So here's our funny little Rhino scene. We've got a silly little building. We've got some rooms. We've got our ERV here. We've got a couple windows in the project. And we need to start building out our domestic hot water system. Now, we don't have like a floor plan or anything here. So we're just going to kind of make this up as we go. But we do know that this was our mechanical room. So if I select this element here and I go up and take a look at the room information, you remember this was we said this was going to be our mech room. Uh, it's got some extract air. Uh, we did not set up any of the non-residential usage because it's a, we'll call it a residence. Uh, and so this is our little mechanical room. So let's say that we're going to build our domestic hot water tank in this room, and then we'll have a circulation loop coming off of that tank and going out to the rest of the house. Now, in a small, if this was really a small little house like this or a small apartment, you might not have a recirculation loop, but for purposes of demonstration, I'm going to show the recirculation loop here. Um, but again, no, you know, yeah, you might you might not have one in your project, and that's totally fine. You don't have to enter this information. So just like when we were working with our ERV, uh, uh, just for purposes of sort of visual clarity, I'm going to um, I'm going to give us a little indication of a, of a hot water tank. So let me give us a little indication of a hot water tank here, and. Um, you know, we'll, we'll say that's going to be our, that'll be our, our tank for, for purposes of this demonstration. All right, so we have a tank here, and we're going to pull some domestic hot water loops off of it. So I'm going to go over to my polyline tool here. I'm going to grab a polyline, and I'm just going to start drawing in. I'll go right from the center. I'm going to start drawing in, whoops, some piping. So what do we want our, our piping to go? And, you know, this would obviously probably be, you would, you would maybe run this off your, um, you know, your, your, uh, your plan set or your um, you know your plumbing plans or something but let's say this is our forward loop so we have a forward loop that comes to I don't know to here so we have a forward loop and now we're gonna have a return loop so let's build another we'll grab our, our, our um, polyline again and let's say that we have a return loop and let's say the return loop whoops so much snapping happening lock there we go so we've got this return loop that'll come across I don't know, till like here, and then we'll go this way, and then we'll return. All right, so we have a forward loop and a return loop. Now, one thing about this is we got we do have to be careful about where we're drawing all of this. So we want to because we're using um, uh, uh, pipelines in this project, we want to make sure that we didn't draw or don't draw these on our opaque envelope area um, layer. So let me open up our layers here and just take a look. And it looks like we drew them on our ERV layer. So I was being sloppy and didn't set my layers ahead of time. So we have our new piping, but it happens to be on our ERV layer. So let me make a new sublayer here, and we'll call this domestic hot water um, recirc. And let me set that as the active layer 
And then let me just um, let me just change these to the domestic hot water recirc layer. All right, there we go. So now these are on our domestic hot water recirc. Um, yep, let me change that to move that to the domestic hot water recirc. Okay, so we have a layer for all of our ERV elements and a layer for all of our uh, domestic hot water recirc elements. So now what do we do with these elements? What are we going to do with these elements? Well, there's a couple ways we could work with them. I can just grab them here like this, and I can just reference them in, and I can set them here, and, and I can pass these in to our pipe geometry. So that would work. We could we could take our we could take our curve and we could just pass that in to the pipe geometry here. But what I'd like to do is actually rather than just pass in the curve and then fill in all of this information here in Grasshopper, well, I could I could set up all these parameters here if I like. I could also set this information back in the Rhino scene, and that's going to be, in my opinion, much easier, much cleaner. It's going to take a lot less parameter management inside of the Grasshopper side. And as we've seen throughout a lot of the elements here, I very much like to manage as much as possible over here in the Rhino side. So to do that, we're going to use a new Rhino side tool. So we have a new Rhino side tool here, and that's going to be in our PHPP toolbar. And it's going to be this guy here, this... Uh, domestic hot water recirculation pipe uh, tool. So if we let me clear off, so if we select our objects, so we select our two curves, our forward and return curve, uh, I come up here uh, describing the pipes which are standing in or representing the pipes. I come up here and I select this domestic hot water um, uh, tool. And it's going to give me some inputs for some various um, recirculation pipe inputs, so some different input items that I might want here. You can see we have the ability to set the diameter of the pipe. We can set the thickness of the insulation on the pipe. Of course, we, uh, for most passive house projects, would normally recommend something like one and a half to two times the diameter in thickness of insulation. Uh, that would be the sort of rule of thumb for, for most of these. Uh, and then we can set the type of insulation, so you know the conductivity value for the, the insulation there. Um, and you can see here um, that these are set up as, uh, you can either type in a value or you can select a value from the drop-down list here. So let's just leave it set at the defaults. The defaults are one inch pipe diameter and an inch and a half insulation it, with a reflective coating, a sort of fiberglass insulation. And let's just say OK. And let's apply those parameters. So we now applied a bunch of information to these curves in the Rhino scene. So now when I take these curves and I reference them and I bring them in, now when I pass these into my research piping object, hopefully I'll get some results. So let's see. So go ahead and pass that in. And now as output, Notice that we are getting a, a valid domestic hot water recirculation piping object with a length. The length is being determined by the 3D geometry. So, for instance, if I was to, oops, let me uh, move. If I was to modify this geometry somehow, if I was to make it a lot smaller. Notice that the length just got a lot smaller. So it's all linked up. It's all sort of connected and live. The diameter is being set by the object. So the diameter is being set by the rollout here. So we have the diameter, as well as the insulation thickness, insulation conductivity, reflectivity, etc. So most of these values are being set by the actual geometry. Some of the elements, the quality of insulation and the um, period of use, um, would still be set here in the grasshopper scene. So we now have a good domestic hot water circulation pipe object. So delete this. And so all we need to do now, we, if we want to, if we can just live with these defaults, 18 hours a day, um, you know, moderate insulation quality, that's fine. Well, all we need to do now is just pass this circulation piping over to the circulation piping input on the system. So I take the circulation piping output and I connect it to the circulation piping input. And as soon as I do that back in my PHPP, I'll go down here to my PHPP document. As soon as I do that in my PHPP, notice we now have all of the, those values written into the circulation piping um, uh, path or, or set here um, in our, in our um, domestic hot water distribution uh, circulation pipe element.
And notice, as I said, we're only using the first of these five banks, so we do not necessarily have to use more than one of these banks. We certainly could. Let's go ahead and add a second bank, just, just to sort of show how it would work. Let's say for whatever reason, we actually have two um, uh, loops that, that come off this uh, particular element. So let's say we come over here, and then, I don't know, we come down here for some reason. And so there's our forward loop, and then we've got a, a return loop as well. So let's just uh, say that it comes down like this, and then it goes there. So we have our curves, our forward and return, and so now we'll have a second set of curves. Okay, so this would be set two, and this here would be set one. So we've got two sets. Now what I can't do is just sort of join these in and add them in. What I do need to do for this component, which is a little bit different than some others, is actually organize this information into a data tree. So I'm going to use the native entwine component. The entwine component, I'm going to take in curves at one into this initial path, in curves at two into the second path, and what that's going to yield me is going to be a data tree with my curves. So curves 1 and 2, forward and return, go into path 0, 0, so that you can see up here. And then curves set 2, so forward and return, go into path 0, 1. And you can see that right here. And so we can have up to five banks of these elements. And all I need to do is just pass this result into my pipe geometry here. And we'll get a bit of an error, and we'll see what happened there. Oh, right, we forgot to set our parameters. Right, so this error is saying, uh, da, 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 yep, right. So we need to, whoops, my bad. So we need to come in here, grab these guys, and set the, their parameters. We just need to set them. Let's say these ones are 3 quarters of an inch insulation, and they're only half inch. I don't know, that would be weird for a recirculation loop, but fine, whatever. All right, so we'll set those guys in, and there we go. Right, so now we're working. Uh, we're getting all of our parameters uh, there, and let's see what we get as a circulation as a new object. So if I take a look at the object now, notice I actually have two of them now. I have one domestic hot water research piping object with a certain length, with a certain diameter, with a certain thickness, and then I have a second piping object with a different length, a different diameter, a different thickness, set by those parameter values here back in our uh, Rhino scene. And both of those are going to flow through into our system object. So let's take a look at what happened in our PHPP now. We'll go back to our PHPP. And notice in our PHPP, whoops, we now have two sets of domestic hot water recirculation pipes, which are being uh, filled out here. So again, you can have up to five of these active in any one PHPP. Of course, if you're going to have multiple PHPPs, you can have more than that. But any single PHPP can only have up to five of these banks, um, and that's usually plenty of complexity for the types of systems that we're that we're building uh, uh, for PassFast certification. So uh, again, we do not have to build it to that level of complexity. I'm going to go in and sort of um, get rid of that because we don't need that much. Uh, so let's delete those. And this is going to get angry at me for a second. Let's get rid of that. And let's just pass that through and get rid of this entwine. This um, uh, entwine is just used to create a data tree from multiple sources, most multiple input sources. So now we're sort of back to our regular system. We go back to the PHPP, and notice now there's no values in this second column. So those were all removed when we removed that that second um, that second system. So now we're back to just our single system here, um, uh, flowing through from our Rhino scene uh, into our our Grasshopper scene. So this video is already getting a little long, so I think we will cut this off here, and we'll come back and take a look at circulation, or excuse me, branch piping in a separate video. Um, we'll sort of take a look at those different options and um, and finish up our discussion of domestic hot water in a in the next video. So I hope that all made sense, and um, I'll look forward to seeing everybody in the next video. We'll we'll finish off our discussion of domestic hot water here. All right, thanks. See you in a bit.